Okay, so last is asking, do my kids cook at all? And when they leave the nest, will they be able to feed themselves? What things do they make? Yes, my, my kids do cook. When, when my kids were, um, when they could reach across the counter, you know, when the counter hit them at their chest and they could reach across, I started teaching them how to use the microwave. I bought an electric can opener uh, so they can open up their own cans of food. I, I still buy canned beans uh, so that, I mean, yes, I cook beans in the iPod, but I also buy canned beans because that way when my kids are hungry between meals, um, they can go up, open up a can of beans and and fix themselves a, a bowl of beans with chips, okay? So they, they know how to work a can opener. I've taught Max how to use the Instant Pot. And, <laughs> and so he knows how to make, he knows how to cook mashed potatoes. He knows how to make uh, lentil, the, my go-to lentil soup. That's one of his favorites. Um, I taught Maggie how to make the soy curl noodle soup that we've been, all been enjoying with the soy curls and the, the lo mein noodles and all that stuff. I've taught her how to use it. So um, they're still a little tentative, you know, a little weary when it comes to the Instapot, you know, because the whole pressure thing, you know, it's just instinctive to have that fear. But, um, but the more that they use it, then they get used to it. They just kind of like, okay, yeah, I know what to do, you know, and then that, Max is, you know, getting used to just seeing it as a pot. So you guys don't see him, see them cooking uh, very much. But yeah, I, if they were, you know, orphaned and, you know, were given an apartment and orphaned and fend for themselves, yeah, they'd be fine. I, they, I think the only trouble they'd run into is just finding everything at the grocery store. I would say I, I need to spend more time with them at the grocery store and helping them um, maneuver their way through it um, than whether you know they could whether they could cook something at home so okay raw food germany kirsten is asking uh how much raw food do you eat percentage in a day Ooh, i would say 66 percent 60 because in the mornings i still love i still love a green smoothie i pack this the my vitamix blender with spinach halfway up then i drop in a few uh bananas then i'm using water for my personal smoothie i'm using water instead of uh, unsweetened plain soy milk and then i'll throw like raspberries or blueberries on top of that and blend that up and i'll make a full pitcher and uh, i'll drink that whole pitcher for breakfast and lunch i really like eating salads i just change up the dressings or i'll get i'll get on a kick where I, i've got a dressing that i really love and I'll just eat a salad every day until I get burned out on that salad dressing and then I'll change. So, um, and then and then I always cook a hot meal for dinner and I tend to like to cook like something really big that could give us two dinners in a row. Gina's asking, what were some of the cookbooks that I started with? Uh, Happy Herbivore. Uh, my first cookbook was Happy Herbivore, the first cookbook. I read Eat to Live by Dr. Furman. I read uh, Dr. Furman's super immunity there's also you know being being plant-based and having kids i wanted to make sure that my kids weren't going to be going without i hope you can't see that this is a disease proof your child feeding kids right by dr Furman. i read that so that helped me and this you know in this book i learned to be patient with my children and uh and, and remember that their health is important too. And giving them junk food doesn't make them healthier. Giving in to giving them junk food doesn't make them healthier. So, But what's important is feeding them what they love to eat. So that's what I learned from that book. And giving them time to adjust their taste. That was important. Being patient with your family to get used to eating something that has less salt in it or has less cheese in it. Our taste, it takes a couple of weeks for us to eat something and then we get used to it. So that's how we learn to give up milk. We were used to drinking raw milk all the time. So to change over to the nut milks, uh, it took time. We tried almond milk, coconut milk, and we finally settled on plain unsweetened soy milk. That was the one that was closest to tasting like milk that we enjoyed pouring on our cereal and I that we enjoyed adding to our mashed potatoes. So, but that took time. You have to be patient with your family. Gosh, oh, Colleen, I, I think of authors better. Colleen Patrick Goudreau was a big help. Her 28 day challenge. Where's that one? Oh no, the 30, this one right here. 
her 30 day vegan challenge book. I wasn't ready for the recipes in this book, but her, there's so much wisdom and experience about living plant-based and um, like getting around the restaurant situations, your family, uh, how to cope with people that are not on board with you or not even interested in, in encouraging you on your path and how to deal with those situations. So that was really good. If she had just written about, you know, how to cope, I mean, which she did. She talked, to, that's what I gained here. I, I learned how to cope with others uh, in this book. And then the recipes, uh, honestly, I've only used one recipe out of this book, um, but it was the rest of it that I really enjoyed. I have a lot of books that I've used very few recipes out of, but the nuggets of wisdom between the recipes have helped. Lisa Hook asked, question of the healthy foods that did play a part in the regain, which ones do you keep at bay? So I don't want to slam any brands, but I, I'm not trying to slam a brand, but I'll tell you what regularly ends up in my freezer when it comes to vegan processed foods. Um, would be the Gardein products, okay? I buy Gardein beefless patties, the black bean patties. Um, well, I don't eat these, but Maggie does. Uh, the fishless fillets, those are super oily, but I don't eat those. I have eaten those, but they're so oily, I can't eat them. They kind of upset my stomach. Um, the, um, like the meatballs, you know, Nate's meatballs, those, those are the those are the processed foods that are in our freezer. Um, I try to limit those to once a week or once every couple of weeks. My family can get burned out on them. There's chips in our house. There's bread in our house. I keep cashews on hand. So there's cashew cream in our life. I make cashew cheese. Uh, there's tofu in our life. We, we eat tofu scrambles. Um, tofu is not an evil food, but it does have some fat in there. We eat peanut butter, almond butter. I don't eat tahini all that much, but it's in there. Sugar is a thing. I'll tell you, I love sugar. I like chocolate. I have a mouthful of chocolate every day. <laughs> um, I've got pecans in there, walnuts, pistachios, <clears throat> hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, <clears throat> lots of seeds and nuts in there. Uh, and whether I'm keeping any at bay, I probably should keep some of those at bay. Uh, Riff asked, will I be buying an Instapot for the kids when they move out? Absolutely. When they move out, I'm going to set them up. I'll set them up with a, a Nutribullet, with an iPod, and I'll set them up with the Breville Convection Smart Oven. That, that's the three major appliances that they'll need to eat healthy. I think that's all anybody really needs. What is my favorite vegetable or fruit? Oh my gosh. Um, favorite, my favorite vegetable, spinach. I really like spinach. I like cabbage. I'm on a cabbage kick right now. Like I'm like in my refrigerator right now, I have a big Rubbermaid tub that's about this deep and it is full of um, ro romaine lettuce hearts, half of a purple cabbage, half of a green cabbage, a bunch of grated carrots, a whole package of cherry tomatoes. I've got some fresh broccoli broken up in there and um, no onion. I'm leaving the onion out, but if I had green onion, I'd probably put green onion tops in there, but I didn't have any. But I, I just mixed that up yesterday and um, it's a lot of salad. Charlie and I will eat it together. He and I are kind of on different salad. We have different tastes in salad dressings right now. So his favorite every day is the same one he's been eating for, for I don't know, three years, uh, is a, a combination of Dijon mustard, maple syrup, a little water. That's it. It's just like those three things. He, he, he shakes that up and he pours that over his salad. And then I'm playing around with, uh, I keep melting almond butter and stirring in, uh, I'm... I'm watering down almond butter with water, and then I'm stirring in like some uh, chili paste and garlic and ginger, and then I'm pouring that over my salad. Kind of like, you know, the, the peanut sauce that you make for spring rolls? I'm like, I'm totally addicted to that, except I've watered it down, 
and I'm using almond butter instead of peanut butter and I'm pouring that all over my salad and I pour it over this you know and I make big I'm like making really big size of my head salads and I'm taking my time it takes me like 30 minutes to eat the whole thing but um but that's what I've been eating for lunch here lately for like I don't know last I've been eating that way for several months uh favorite fruits uh bananas and apples and mandarin oranges I don't have just one I don't have one favorite anything Heather's asking me do I exercise and what do you like to do I do not have an exercise routine I'll tell you what I do I get myself all worked up and I'm like yeah I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this three times a day and every day and bleh, every other week and bleh, bleh, whatever you know I'm like, ah. and then Monday comes and I'm like yeah I do the whole thing I'm like yoga and I'm pumping weights and then that's it I'll do it like on Monday and then the whole week goes by and nothing happens uh, so <laughs> which is kind of sad, but that's the way I roll. I do like to dance. So when I'm, you know, I, I'd rather turn on the music and like get all sweaty and just dance and do stuff like that. But I do not have an exercise routine. I should. Occasionally, I think to go for a walk when the weather's really nice. Uh, but most of my life is spent right here at my desk, at my computer, editing video, studying recipes, creating the next content, going on live, doing more videos, more editing, talking with people. I spend a lot of time answering emails, uh, answering comments. Uh, it is a be having this YouTube channel and having the lifestyle support group. It is a full-time job. And so, and it is one that has me at my desk all day long. And if I'm not doing this, I'm homeschooling the kids, which is more sitting and more studying and talking. So there we go. Oh, do I use a fat-free fryer? No, I do not use a fat-free fryer because uh, they don't come big enough to cook enough food for four hungry people. That's why I haven't purchased one. I have a good size regular oven and I have my Breville convection oven. Everything that I could air fry you know or whatever everything that I would want fried or I can bake off in my oven or bake in my convection oven that sits on my counter and my aunt has one and she has we've already talked about it and she lives alone uh, but in her experience it doesn't it's she says it doesn't save time but for her she's got limited counter space it's she's just cooking for herself and so she really enjoys it but she she even told me that um, that I don't need one and it wouldn't make enough food so I'm taking her advice on that one. Oh yeah and soy curls you know soy curls are high in fat too they're not super high in fat they're like four grams of fat if you eat a half a cup's worth um, which half a cup of soy curls is quite a bit for one serving but that's four grams of fat and we do eat soy curls a couple of times a week that's not a processed food but it is a food that's um that that you know it's high it would be considered you know moderately fat but you know i you know i want to say this too i i'll be real honest with you i do not get hung up on nutrients i do not uh count calories i don't weigh my food i'm not i'm not paying attention to how many grams of fat i'm eating <clears throat> if i started paying attention to all that it would take the fun out of it for me honestly and i'm fortunate that i don't have a medical condition or a reason that i have to keep track of those things so i'm not saying that you know i know there are folks out there that do need to pay attention to their fats um because of medication or maybe they're they're diabetic or something like that and those things do affect um you know how they function in a day so i'm not um, I'm not saying that but for me I don't keep track of any of that stuff and I don't I don't take supplements if somebody's asked me that and I haven't seen it I don't do supplements at all uh, I do have a bottle of b12 in the pantry and occasionally like once a month I might eat one I feel like I can get plenty of b12 from drinking the the fortified soy milk that we that we buy um, so I think I'm getting, you know, I've got enough there. My family gets enough of that there. 
So um, I don't worry with that. Uh, you know, I read, um, if anybody's read Dr. Campbell's whole Rethinking the Science of Nutrition book, that is an awesome read. And that book taught me that, that taking supplements and trying to control our health with supplements is not effective like we think it is. Um, we can do more harm to our body than good uh, when we start taking supplements and it's we need to be careful when we do that. So we are always gonna be better off if we would just stick to eating whole foods that are minimally processed or, or stay whole altogether and we avoid processed sugars and fats. If we can stay away from those, then we just stick to the whole foods we will get all the nutrients that we need. We'll get the right amount of healthy fats that we need and we'll have the, the satisfaction of being full sticking with a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, Kimmy says, what inspired you to share your awesome with the world? <laughs> this will be my last question. I was already a blogger before I went plant-based. So in 2007, I was... Uh, food blogs and that kind of stuff were new on the scene. I, I was not finding any blogs that were cooking foods that my family would want to eat. And if they were cooking foods that my family would be interested in, the photography was disgusting. It never looked good. And uh, and then the, the blogs that had really beautiful pictures and mouthwatering stuff, it was always of stuff that I would never be able to get my kids to eat. And so my husband is a web designer he's a pro he's a programmer first and but he's also a web developer and um so he said well if it's not there why don't you make it and why don't you be the person that does that and at the time I was like you know I didn't really have anything else to do I was big into Martha Stewart I spent most of my day cleaning my house and keeping my house meticulous and uh, I was you know we were home I was homeschooling I just started homeschooling Max and so uh, I was like, sure, I got time for a blog. And um, so I started blogging and, and my focus on my blog was to show how to eat clean <laughs> because we were eating grass-fed meats. I, knew, I was going out to the chicken farms to get uh, fresh processed chickens. Uh, I was visiting the farms to get food and all that kind of stuff. And I was learning how, I, I, I was learning how to can and so I was sharing those experiences on my blog. And then about 2010, technology caught up with us and I learned to start making videos. And so I did a couple of videos. Um, well, I started doing a few videos and that's where those pictures came from when you're seeing me with the big arms and the tank top. You know, I'm showing how to start. You know, I knew how to pressure cook. And so I started sharing how to pressure cook and stuff like that. And I just started building, I was already building a community online. I had already produced a couple of um, Kindle books or iBooks and stuff like that. I started making books then. And um, so I was already online. I already had a community. I had 100,000 visitors coming to my website all the time. Um, so I was in the zone. And so when I went plant-based, I had to ask myself, um, am I going to go start a new website and give this up or should I just change right in front of my community and see who stays? And I decided that the whole point, you know, feeling great, uh, I could do more good um, being an example to others than to go and find a community that was already on board. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I recognized that, that I had more, that there was more purpose in this, that I could have more purpose in this than just what, what I was experiencing. And so, um, so I just changed right in front of my community. And yes, I lost people, but I also kept some people, uh, for anybody who is in my lifestyle, uh, support group, if y'all have noticed, there's a man in there named Paul. Uh, he's, he comes in and he asks questions. He's 70 years old and he has been my fan from the very beginning. He has watched my children grow up in it through pictures and now on video and no, he has not converted to living a plant-based lifestyle, but that man loves his vegetables and he, he has not given up, uh, pursuing 
you know, just eating more vegetables. And so I think that's awesome. I think that's a win. You know, if, if I can just, uh, if I can just remind people that they already love vegetables and that they can just eat more of them and start feeling better, if that gets them to the direction of, of, of grabbing onto a plant-based lifestyle and feeling better, then that's what I want to do. I, I love being here and I love talking about food. It's all the time. God gave me all this. He gave me a love for food. He gave me a love for cooking. He, he gave me the life that I have so that I can turn around and use it to inspire his children and to inspire people to live healthier. And if that's all I've got to do for the rest of my life is to show people that eating a healthy eating healthier makes them feel better, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. That's my fuel. That's what keeps me going. And um, so that's what I'm doing. That's it. So I'm going to do it until I'm dirt. I want to travel. You know, I want to uh, speak at uh, veg fest and conferences and stuff like that. I want to share in as many different ways that I can share. So that's my focus. That's where I'm headed. Thank you for listening. I hope that some parts or all these parts of my story have inspired you or got you thinking um, or have it has encouraged you to keep going. Oh my gosh. If it encourages you to keep going, yay. Um, I love you. If you have any questions, please, again, Feel free to post them in the comments below. Join my lifestyle support group, Jill McKeever Plant-Based Lifestyle Support on Facebook. It is a private group, so you are, so you can um, feel safe to post your questions without the judgment of friends and family. You know uh, that kind of thing. Please join me over there. There's a great many people there ready to take you in and, and answer all your questions. I hope you subscribed you know, and, uh, and thumbs up the video, share it with your friends, you know, hey, I met this weird lady that wears ears, bunny ears in her videos, you got to see her, that could be that simple, please share me out with your friends, don't be afraid, don't be afraid of what they'll think, just let them laugh, let them figure out for themselves if they want to be part of this, all right, now, I'm quitting, I love you, I'll see y'all later, I'm going to go grocery shopping now, bye.